Welcome back to Iskar Forum, a prophetic think tank. Uh, I'm Les Lawrence with Elisha Vision Ministries, and glad to have you with us. Um, I'm just going to experiment a little bit today, and so bear with me as we try a little bit more technology. It's still just Dorian and I doing it, but <laughs> I hope you'll hope you enjoy it. And uh, in fact, uh, if you want to let me know what you think of it, you can email me at leslawrence at live.com. That's live, L-I-V-E. Leslawrence at live.com. Let me know what you think of the new uh, ideas here. Uh, let's start with my blog as I usually do. Or actually, let's start with prayer like we usually do. <laughs> and then we'll look at the blog. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the faithful God. And we thank you that you are watching over Israel. We continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for rain in, in Israel. And Lord, we also pray for the uh, Carolinas and the east coast of the United States and all the rain and the hurricane came through this week. Uh, Lord, there was much devastation, but we also believe there was mercy and, and you spared us. It could have been so much worse. Uh, at one time it was a Category 4 and it ended up being a 1 when it hit. So we thank you for that. We can pray, Lord, for all those folks suffering uh, presently. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I just mentioned that uh, where we live in Wake Forest, north of Raleigh, uh, has been very little effects from the storm and and it's all been further south in the state. Well, um, you can see now on on uh, my screen here. You see, uh, what, what, you'll see what I'm looking at as we go through the uh, the time here. And uh, this is my blog. You can find it at uh, www.elishavision.wordpress.com. And the blog I did this week was called "Trump Stands with Israel." Some very big news, actually. Uh, more things that President Trump is doing in favor of Israel. John Bolton expre expressed a couple of them this week that uh, that the International Criminal Court, and I, I don't want to get too detailed, but the International Criminal Court uh, is against Israel and against the United States. They recently threatened to uh, charge our soldiers in Afghanistan with war crimes. Unbelievable. And uh, so the U.S. is saying that uh, if, it, if they do that, we'll arrest the judges of the International Supreme Court. I mean, the International uh, Criminal Court, whatever it's called, ICC. And uh, and we'll cut off their funds and so forth. So that's really great. And he says, not only if they do that, if they charge our soldiers, but if they charge Israeli soldiers as well, which they've been threatening to do uh, in in uh, because of is Israel defending their borders. And uh, so that's pretty pretty big news, and I'm thankful for that. And uh, the, the uh, scripture that the Lord gave me for that was about Cyrus in Isaiah 45. I won't read the whole thing, but it ends up with, I do this so that you may know that I am Jehovah, the God of Israel, the one who calls you by name. And I believe God is really uh, working towards uh, blessing uh, our nation because we're blessing Israel. Well, uh, we'll move on to the... Next story here, and that's uh, I do want to give a little bit about the the uh, hurricane and how it's affecting us locally. Uh, it's 14 uh, deaths uh, now, and and the hurricane is pretty much past the winds, but the uh, flooding now is going to be bad for the next several days, and uh, rivers are rising. I know the Cape Fear River around Fayetteville and below is at some places might be 62 feet above flood stage. I, I don't really know what that means, but I know it doesn't sound good. <laughs> and um, this was something I found, uh, a simulation of a Category 4 hurricane on nuclear reactors in North Carolina and uh, a potential real event. This was done a couple of weeks ago before the storm, and it was uh, discussing what could happen if a major hurricane hit the nuclear reactors. Once again, we were spared that, for which I'm very thankful. And uh, then while the storm was going on, something happened up in Massachusetts that hasn't been mentioned on the news very much. Uh, thousands of residents still out of their homes after gas explosions triggered deadly chaos in uh, Massachusetts. And uh, I've got some pictures of this that I want to show you. Um, the uh, What happened evidently was... Uh, a gas company called Columbia Gas was uh, making changes in their system and they evidently uh, made too much some, some, too much power, too much uh, 
intensity or something in the lines and it just started blowing up in various um, uh, houses around three towns, Lawrence, Massachusetts, Andover, and North Andover. And here's a picture of another house that's on fire. And they're sort of random houses, but it was uh, close to 80 homes uh, exploded with their natural gas. And here's a kind of an aerial view, but uh, pretty pretty serious. And uh, we need to be in prayer for them. We talk about the uh, what we're doing, praying for uh, Florence and the hurricane. But keep in mind, there's something going on up there too. Well, this week uh, there's another alleged Israeli strike. Uh, Israel doesn't admit when they do it, but evidently they struck uh, an Iranian weapons uh, delivery uh, depot in Damascus. Uh, this is just ongoing. Israel continues to attack them. They keep bringing in more weapons and arms, and Israel blows them up. And uh, this time it says it caused substantial damage to the arms depot. Uh, and it's di it was disguised as a UN facility, which is kind of serious. There you can see a picture of a missile flying in. Um, then the big event uh, just happening just in the last few hours Today, in fact, uh, a Palestinian terrorist murders an Israeli man at a shopping mall in Israel, uh, south in the, in the West Bank, but south of Jerusalem. And uh, he's an American. He's a, had dual citizenship, American-Israeli. And uh, and I like what the, this is uh, Israel Today magazine, and I like what they said, is it happens all too often. A Palestinian Arab extremist on Sunday exploited the fact that Israel in fact, does not practice apartheid and lets Jews and Arabs shop at the same malls to carry out, and he carried out a heinous act of violence. And I think that's a good point to be made. Palestinians are always accusing Israel of being apartheid, and yet they're completely integrated, and that's how this could happen, because they are. Um, our U.S. Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, made this statement. America grieves as one of its citizens was brutally murdered by a Palestinian terrorist. Ari Fold was a passionate defender of Israel and American patriot. He represented the best of both countries and will be deeply missed. May his family be comforted and his memory be blessed. Uh, another statement uh, from uh, Ynet News. Uh, this is the response of Hamas. Hamas welcomes the Gusitzion terror attack. And uh, they're saying... Uh, the Palestinian people will continue the Jerusalem Intifada and says that stabbing is a natural response to crimes perpetrated by the Zionist terrorists. Except you don't have Zionists stabbing Israeli citizens or American citizens or Gazans or anybody else. Uh, it's only happening by the terrorists. That's not something that Israel does. And... Uh, and here's another quote from an Israeli. Our good friend, father, good Jew, and incredible fighter for Israel, Ari Fold, was murdered in Gush Etzion today. After being stabbed, he got up and shot the terrorists, but later succumbed to his wounds. We will miss him very much and ensure his legacy continues. Uh, a very heroic man and a hero in Israel, uh, part of the IDF, and, uh, and also, uh, like I said, an American citizen. He actually managed to shoot the attacker, in the leg, and the attacker lived, uh, survived, but uh, he died. Um, terrible story. This is a great story about him on um, Breaking Israel News, a Torah tribute to Ari Fold in his own words. <clears throat> and uh, there's a picture of him blowing a shofar, and it says uh, uh, what was uh, might be less well known about him is that on Fridays, just before Shabbat, he would teach the upcoming week's Torah portion live on Facebook uh, be, beside his beloved uh, barbecue grill. <laughs> Talks about that. But then this actual last one he did this Friday, uh, he spoke for 18 minutes on Deuteronomy 31. And uh, in it, he is explaining that uh, Moses is about to die in Deuteronomy 31. And he's handing over his leadership to Joshua and uh, and. And Ari Fold asks, what does the leader of the nation of Israel say as he's about to die and give over his leadership to the next person in line? Well, what he, what he says is, and this is kind of a profound point that I want to share. Uh, what he says is not, I'm giving everything over to Joshua, but he says, I'm giving everything over to God. And the scripture here in the blue uh, is Hashem, Hashem 
your God himself. Of course, in the actual Hebrew, it's the name of God, Jehovah. So I'll, I'll use that. Jehovah, your God himself, will cross over before you, and he himself will wipe out those nations from your path, and you shall dispossess them. Joshua is the one who shall cross before you, as Jehovah has spoken. So it's not that Joshua will deliver the people of Israel any more than Moses did, but God himself did. Jehovah, God, your God himself, will cross over before you, and he himself will wipe out those nations before your path. Whew, that's exciting. I like that. And uh, bless that man who was killed today by a terrorist. And uh, now here's another story in Times of Israel. Hundreds bury boy killed in Gaza clash as conflicting reports are on his death. This is a young boy in Gaza who was killed in the demonstrations that continue every weekend on the Gaza-Israel border. And uh, the, the uh, Hamas says he was shot dead by IDF troops. A friend says he was hit by a tear gas, tear gas canister, but Associated Press reports that the IDF has evidence showing he was struck by a rock thrown by one of the protesters. So that's the problem with getting news out of Israel, all the different points of view. Uh, and I think I'll take the word of, uh, of the video that he was struck by a rock thrown by his own uh, compatriots. Well, Israel Today, another article here. Palestinians declare Trump their enemy, threaten explosion of violence. Yeah, like they haven't been doing that for the last 20 years or 25 years. Uh, kind of ridiculous. But uh, they, Abbas and the Palestinian Authority have just been fighting Trump at every, at every point, and they're losing because Trump has stripped them of the funds the U.S. used to give to them. Uh, another article, Trump to the Palestinians, don't bite the hand that feeds you. <laughs> Despite being wholly dependent upon the goodwill of Israel, the Arab states and Western power brokers, the PA, the Palestinian Authority, has seemingly done its best to alienate each and every one. And uh, they're still trying to isolate Israel, and yet they themselves are being isolated. Times of Israel reports that Abbas says he will go to International Court of Justice, that's ICC again, uh, over uh, some destruction of homes in the West Bank that were illegally built. But also it says he may seek the court's intervention over what he claims are Israeli plans for Jewish prayer on the Temple Mount. <gasps> the shock <laughs> that Israel would want to have make it legal for Jews to pray on the Temple Mount. Uh, Israel does believe in uh, freedom of religion, and yet Jews are not allowed, Christians either, are not allowed to pray on the Temple Mount. And just the idea that Israel might be considering that, Abbas says he's going to go to the ICC, and, and uh, have, you know, charges brought. Well, that's what uh, the Trump administration has said that they will not allow at all. And uh, I praise God for that. Here's another story. This is a Debka file. U.S. Democrats to Palestinians, we won't fight your war. Uh, that's interesting. There's a growing resistance uh, in the Democrats, among the Democrats, uh, to getting involved in the Palestinians. Now, the leftists, the, the liberal socialists, are all in on protecting the Palestinians, and they're against Israel. But there are some Democrats who are saying no to defending the Palestinians. A nice little cartoon there on the, on the article. Uh, here's my favorite cartoon, though. This is about Trump and about the anonymous uh, article in the New York Times. Inside the New York Times editorial de department, Hey guys, Judas Iscariot just sent us a killer piece. We'll print it as by Anonymous. <laughs> and uh, the betrayal that's going on and the complicity of uh, the New York Times and Washington Post, something you really need to be aware of. Uh, they're, they're depending more and more on anonymous sources. And uh, my opinion is if somebody's not willing to, to stand up and name and if they're accusing somebody of something, uh, then their, their words are not credible. And uh, I sure love uh, the, the uh, Dry Bones cartoons by Yaakov Kirshen in Israel. I've been working with the Jerusalem Post for 28, 25 years. Uh, here's a verse in Proverbs 21 I wanted to draw your attention to. He who is often rebuked and hardened his neck will suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. And I'm thinking right now of, of uh, President Abbas of the Palestinian Authority. He's been rebuked and hardens his neck all, over and over again. And uh, we'll see what happens to him, but I, I don't think he has a real place in a peaceful uh, 
Israel or peaceful Middle East. Um, another story from Debkafil. Putin forced by U.S. and Turkey to shell the Idlib offensive. You might have been hearing that on the news this past week, uh, that uh, there's going to be a big attack on uh, the largest town remaining in Syria that's not under Assad's control. Uh, Idlib is what it's called, and there's three million people there, but they say there's about 30,000 uh, terrorists, and by various definitions, but some of them are actually Al-Qaeda and maybe even ISIS, so uh, it's all mixed up. But anyway, uh, Putin, Iran, and uh, Syria were, and Hezbollah were going to mount a major offensive against that city, uh, and now it appears they're backing off because of Turkey is not willing to uh, let them do it, and Turkey's right there on the border. That's a city on the Turkey-Syria border, and also uh, the U.S. is is resist resisting it, so maybe that's going to happen, and there won't be, because they were talking about a massacre. It could have been hundreds of thousand people killed, mostly civilians, so that's good news if that can be stopped. Uh, Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs has a story, I can't go into detail, but Iran and Turkey divert Iraq's river waters, leaving Iraq on the brink of catastrophe. We've talked about the, the um, five-year drought in the Middle East, which is affecting Israel, but it's even worse, having worse effects in Iraq. And with Iran taking some of the water and Turkey uh, diverting some of the water, uh, Iraq is running out of water, and that's creating a crisis that we'll probably hear more about in the future. Uh, Times of Israel has a story. Palestinian activists, EU, the European Union, should defund BDS like Trump slashed aid for UNRWA. Well, now, I won't go into the background of this other than to say this is an interesting thing that... Um, that a Palestinian is saying that EU should uh, block BDS, the Boycott, divert, uh, Divest, and Sanction movement, very popular on American campuses and European campuses and so forth, uh, and among, among liberals, uh, boycotting Israel and blah, 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 and just it's not having a lot of effect. But the effect it is having, according to this Palestinian, is that it's actually hurting the Palestinians. Their goods aren't being sold. Their workers are not allowed to work in factories where they can make more money and so forth. We talked a little bit about that last week when we talked about SodaStream being bought out by Pepsi-Cola and having to move their factory from the West Bank into Israel because of the BDS movement. So here's a Palestinian speaking up. That's good. Um, here's a story. Uh, th this is on a Prophecy News Watch. What is America's prophetic destiny? And I'm not going into the detail, uh, but I did want to mention uh, something about this, uh, that uh, Ezekiel 20 uh, tells us uh, something very important about, uh, about this. It says that uh, God will cause the Jews who are scattered to the nations to come to one place called the wilderness of the peoples, and then he'll uh, deal with them face to face there. And uh, I think that's pretty interesting that uh, I think that could be referring uh, to America. You can see it in Ezekiel 20, verse around 34, 35, somewhere in there. And uh, you can check that out yourself. Um, here's an interesting story on uh, Arut Shev, Israel National News. Who is pushing Jews out of academia in the U.S.? Um, and it's talking again about BDS and steps taken by the Trump administration against anti-Israel groups on campuses are the critical response. Again, to summarize this, it's simply that the Trump administration uh, is now going to uh, consider uh, anti-Israel uh, activities on college campuses the same as anti-Semitic, which they are. <laughs> but uh, this, is, this is the Trump administration making that uh, clar clarification because there was a separation. Oh, we're not being anti-Semitic. We're just against Israel. And uh, now the Trump administration is, is uh, speaking truth to that lie. Uh, here's some good news. We'll finish with some good news today. The Czech Republic uh, it, leaders are now backing their Jerusalem embassy move. The Czech embassy is going to be moved to Jerusalem, and uh, that's good news. We praise the Lord for that. And, of course, we're, we're coming into Yom Kippur starting uh, this Tuesday night. Uh, and Yom Kippur is, uh, in, Jewish, in the Jewish uh, uh, faith, is a time of uh, repentance and seeking forgiveness. And of course, in, in the Bible, it was once a year their sins would be forgiven for the next year or for the past year. Uh, but, of course, we understand under the real eternal plan of the Messiah, 
our sins are forgiven uh, once and for all. And uh, Jesus became the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. They're not just covered, they're actually removed. And that is wonderful news. Uh, by the way, before I go on a little further on Yom Kippur, I want to also mention that this week the United Nations begins to meet, and I don't know the exact timing, but President Trump is actually going to speak at the UN, and uh, rumors are that he's going to unveil his uh, peace plan for the Middle East, so we need to be in prayer about that. Uh, but then uh, a little more about uh, Yom Kippur. You can see this picture of uh, people riding bicycles on a street that it normally is covered with cars, and all over Israel on Yom Kippur, no vehicles, no motor vehicles are allowed to be on the roads. So even the interstate uh, six-lane highways are empty of cars. Public transportation, buses, taxis, uh, Jews and Arabs. Nobody can drive on Yom Kippur, the highest holy day in the Jewish calendar. So what happens is that people get their bicycles out and they ride up and down the highways. And uh, it's, it's a pretty neat picture, a neat sight. Well, here's... Uh, my uh, parting uh, shot here for you from Dry Bones. Uh, this is Yom Kippur with love. May your wishes be granted, may your prayers be answered, and may your name be inscribed in the book of life. That would be my prayer for, for you as well. So let's pray in, in closing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the fact that the Judeo-Christian faith is the only faith in the world that offers eternal forgiveness through the Messiah. And we thank you, Lord that you have forgiven our sins if we ask for it, if we, if we accept your uh, provision of salvation, the lamb that was slain and the blood that was applied for our sins. Thank you, Father God, Jehovah, we pray. In the name of your Son, Yeshua ben Jehovah, Jesus, the Son of God, I pray. Bless Israel and bring the rain, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.